why am I doing this to myself right now? You remember when I said, oh, this doesn't look like it's going so bad, and then that intro comes in? Yep, cool. Hello everybody, my name is Arthur, and welcome back to Everlasting Summer. Um, yep. It's a, uh, yep, we're back to the dating sim game, so let's get back to the narration, shall we? Bright daylight struck my eyes. At first I didn't pay attention, as I wasn't fully awake yet. On their own, my legs carried me towards the door. Simeon? Oh, that's me! My name is Simeon. Hello, my name is Simeon. Damn, looks like I fell asleep and missed my stop. But there was no door. I looked around the bus and realized that it wasn't a good old worn out Liaz. Instead the bus was a an Icarus model, a new one. I froze in shock. How? What? Am I dead? Have I been kidnapped? No, I must be dead. I patted myself down feverishly. <laughs> slept myself. Oh god, what the fuck did I do that? Uh, m slept myself painfully in the face a few times, banged my forehead on the back of one of the bus's seats. It's clear, either I'm still alive, or you can still feel pain when you're dead. But how could this happen? Maybe I slept for too long and ended up at the bus depot. And then, what did- did they put me onto another bus? I rushed out and, and took a look around. Greenery wherever I looked, tall grass on the roadside, trees, flowers, summer. But how? It was just winter a moment ago. My head was aching unbearably, as if I was going to explode. Slowly I began to remember. Oh, he's remembering! The boy's remembering! What do you remember, buddy? Did we warp? Did we, tra did we time travel? Did we do the time warp? Or did we just go off? A long road running off into the distance, forest, plains, fields, lakes, and forests again. I think I was sleeping. But then, how can I remember all of it? And then, a gap. Some girl leaning over me. She softly whispered something into my ear. Then a gap again. What did she whisper? I want to know! And then I woke up here. Who was that strange e-girl? Or was she just a dream? For some reason, thinking about her made me feel better and calmed me down a little. I felt warmth all over, coming from the inside. Could it be her who brought me here? Then I need to find her, and the best place to look for her is away from here. I rushed to the left, then to the right, then stopped, hesitating over where to go. Finally, I ran in the direction from which the bus had probably came. Where are we going, young boy, young lad? Physical exercise does refresh one's mind. Though, I can't believe I skipped that so I can go back and figure out. Here is, here is what I said. Thoughts become clearer and it gets a little easier to evaluate the surrounding reality. Not in my case, however. I was sitting on the roadside, wheezing and trying to ease my sore throat by gulping breaths of hot air. In any case, the run did its job. The fear withdrew for a while. Maybe I really am just dreaming. Though recalling myself harm on the on the bus, I immediately rejected the idea. I'm neither dreaming nor dead. A narrow road ran through the field and far into the distance. That same exact road from my dream. I must be very far away from home. And it's not just that it was winter yesterday and it's summer now. It's the whole environment. Of course, summer is usually like this, green and hot, but here, everything is not entirely lifelike. Um, summer in Australia is not green and hot. It is, it is very brown and moist, and it sucks a lot of balls, well, in Brisbane especially. Everything looks like it was taken from the paintings of Russian landscape artists of the 19th century. Maybe that's because the person who did this artwork in this game, who created this game, is a Russian landscape artist of the 19th century. Just saying, maybe he's over 100 years old. 
Maybe he's just immortal. Why are these flies around me? The grass is just too lush. The bushes are not like what bushes used to be, or should be. They're so thick that you can't see anything through them. Like treetops, honestly. And the trees themselves. The forest was quite far away, but the trees looked as if they had closed their ranks and were now just waiting for the order to advance onto the fields and plains. I caught my breath and looked at the bus, which was now barely visible. That was a good run. Fear overtook me once again. Those power lines. There must be people here. But what does it mean? In fact, that means nothing at all. Couldn't they have power lines even in hell? Roasting sinners over hot coals? That's so last century. They must have reached the point of no return. After which you should either lose your mind completely or finally try to understand what is going on. And while I still have a choice, I should pick the second option. Slowly headed back to the bus. Of course it was scary. But I'm not likely to find an answer in the fields or the woods. And this wretched bucket of bolts is the only kind of link that I have with the real world. Oh! It's the gate! It's the gate! I should carefully scout the area. A brick wall in its gates, crowned with a Sylvan York sign. Statue, uh, statues of pioneers standing on either side, and a road sign near, nearby showing the bus route number 410. The trip's taking a bit too long today. I smirked. A person may start acting inappropriately in extreme situations. Something like that has probably happened to me right now. This place didn't look abandoned at all. No rust on the gates. No damage to the walls. Sauvez you knock. What could have a name like that? Judging by the pioneer statues, it could be a kid's summer camp. Moreover, it appears to be open. Of course, the simplest explanation, logically speaking, explains nothing at all. The strange e-girl that altered uh, the altered bus, summer, the pioneer camp. Thousands of theories went through my mind instantly, from alien abduction to lethargic sleep, from hallucination to a time and space shift. No, none was worse than any other, but there was really no way to pick a single one. Then it occurred to me, I could try and make a phone call. I took out my cell phone and dialed the number from my contact list. Hello? Hello? There's no one on the line. There's no signal. That's what I'm trying to say. But instead, the signal strength bars. The screen was just showing a thick cross. Alright, there may be uh, there, be, there may be no signal in such a remote place, though I cannot be the only one who came here. Buses don't drive themselves. Maybe the girl, the e-girl, who leaned over him, was the one driving the bus. I examined the bus from all sides to make sure that it wasn't a hallucination. Bits of dirt on the bottom, some rust here and there, faded paint and worn out tires. No, this is definitely a very ordinary Icarus. Yeah, exactly the kind of bus that which takes you to places beyond your understanding if you carelessly fall asleep. I gave a nervous chuckle. It came out by itself, sporadically. Because this wasn't the right place or time to laugh. But where on earth is the driver? I cautiously sat down on the curb beside the bus and started to wait. As time flew by, no one came. My patience didn't last long. My anxiety seemed to have reached its peak, and I started to go slightly mad. In such a situation, anyone would have probably felt something similar. Aliens and parallel universes were gone from my imagination, leaving only void and darkness. Oh, it's the void! Is this how everything will end? How my life will end? But I wanted to do so much. There were so many things I had no time for yet. I was overwhelmed by the idea that this was definitely the end. But why? It's not fair. Surely I'm no worse than anyone else. Oh god, why? I need a drink. Mother kicked apple. It's really good, I promise. Tears were burning my eyes unbearably. I curled up and started rolling in the grass. 
Why? Why did I did I do? Why me? But my cries were only heard by the speechless statues of the pioneers and a bird on the tree which immediately flapped its wings and took off, crying out something in its own bird language as if laughing at the idiot who dared to interrupt its after-dinner nap. I was left breathless from weeping and just lay quietly, sobbing occasionally. Okay, yep, that's uh, fair enough. After a while, I managed to pull myself together. My mind cleared up a bit as if terror and the fear of death gave me a little break. All in all, if someone wanted to kill me, what is all this for? It doesn't look like an experiment either. If this is just some crazy coincidence, then there's probably no threat. Anyway, for now it seems there's no danger. The panic was soon gone. Of course, the blood was still pounding in my temples and my head hands were still shaking. But at last, at least I could think clearly now. Right now, there is nothing I can really change anyway. So, no matter how much I think or how mad I get, it would only make things worse. Until some actual facts appear, there is really no point in making guesses. In any case, I won't learn anything by landing around here. No, you won't. This camp, if, of course, it is really a camp. Looked like the only place where people could be, so I decided to go there. And hardly had I reached the gates when a girl came out from behind them. Oh, hello, blonde one. This is where the game starts getting interesting. When little waifus come out and we go the eye poppy and the tongue rolly. Wearing a pioneer uniform. My logic didn't let me down this time. Then again, a pioneer uniform in the 21st century. And then again, an e-girl here. I froze, unable to take a step. I felt very much like running away. Yeah, I run away when I see girls too. <laughs> running as far as away as I could from this place. From the, uh, far from this bus. Gates, statues, and far from this bloody bird with its siesta. Just running, free like the wind, faster and faster. Waving to the planets passing by, winking at the, ga at the galaxies. Running. Becoming a pulsar ray and turning into vestigial radiation, running to the face unknown. That's a little bit of an overreaction there. Run no matter where, as long as it's far away from this place. Oh my god, she got closer. Oh, that is terrifying. Meanwhile, the girl came closer and smiled. <laughs> I could not help but notice her beauty, even though I was trembling with fear. Human instincts worked independent on consciousness, and while only 5% of the brain is responsible for cognitive processes, the remaining 95% are always busy sustaining life, and in particular, ensuring stable functioning of the hormonal system. Oh, his PP got bigger. I desperately wanted to get less complicated, and stop thinking in, in, in formal quotes from an encyclopedia, though my thoughts appeared one by one, being stupid, out of this place, as if taken from an internal monologue of the hero of some junky softcover crime fiction book. Can you imagine? If he's here, if he's actually talking this, this is, like, th and this is real time. And she's just staring at him. It's just this. For a long time, while he's just thinking in his head, she's waiting for him to say something. A pretty Slavic face. Long braids that looked like two armfuls of fresh hay. And blue eyes you could drown in. Oh, she's talking, Pioneer Girl. Hi. You must have just arrived. Uh, reply. Um, yeah. Alright then, welcome. She smiled broadly. Strange. It looked as if I had just... A normal girl in front of me. Ha. <laughs> I shouldn't have returned here. The woods and fields seemed better. But what shall I do next? Try to speak with her as if she was a human? Or run away or what? The blood was pumping unbearably in my head. Tearing it apart from the inside. A little bit more and the, pi and the poor pioneer girl would just be splattered with the gruesome contents of my skull. What's so funny about that? The girl looked over me. It sent shivers down my spine and my knees started to tremble. See? This is why we need anxiety pills, because we have too much anxiety when talking to girls. <laughs> Nothing. Great then. Great. What's so great about that? 
Suddenly a thought crossed my mind to t to hell with it. Oh god, I can't fucking read. Forget about the bus behind me. The fact that it was winter yesterday and summer today, I wanted to rip off my itchy sweater and just accept that this is all actually happening. Everything is as it should be. All for the, all this is for the best. Uh, would you happen to know... You should go to our camp leader. She'll tell you everything. Look, you go straight ahead to the square, then turn left. You'll see several small cabins. She pointed at the gates, as if I knew what was behind them. Dimitri, uh, uh, Dimitri Vena is a patronymic and a derivative of a person's father's name, in this case, Dimitri, uh, put by the Russians after the person's first name as a sign of respect or formal address. Oh, okay. Well, you can ask someone where Olga Dimitrova's cabin is. I, I am butchering this language. I am so sorry. I, uh... Got it? Of course I didn't. Well, I've got to go now. Alright, fine. The girl waved her hand at me and disappeared through the gates. It seems as if, to her, I was something ordinary. And all this show with the bus and the travels while awake or asleep were troubling only to me, while everything here is just the way it is supposed to be. Camp leader. Pioneer uniform? What are they doing? Uh, what are they doing a historical reenactment here? I hope I won't find Lenin standing atop an armored car in this square. But even that would not surprise me right now. After standing alone for a while, I headed into the camp. Oh, a fifty, a, a mere fifty meters ahead, a small one-story house popped up on the left side. The sign near the door said, Clubs. I was about to come closer. Oh, there's another one! When the door suddenly opened and a shock girl wearing a pioneer uniform came out. Her pretty face gave me the impression of one suffering for the fate of the whole mankind with a truly universal sorrow. As soon as she saw me, the girl froze, as if frightened. I froze too, considering what was the best, considering what was the best to do: to approach first, or wait until she showed some initiative, or maybe run away after. Although, this last option was constantly being suggested only by my self-preservation instinct. At least that's what uh, that's what I'd like to believe. Not the worst human instinct, but far from the most logical. If this instinct played poker against deductive abilities, the outcome would be predetermined. And those deductive abilities, or at least their semblance, were hinting to me that there was no need to be frightened of this girl. Oh my god, there's another one! She's too short, she's like fucking 12! Get her out of this dating sim! Suddenly, somebody jumped out in the nearby bushes. A girl wearing a bright red t-shirt with USSR written on it. Such a perfect reproduction of the age. She looked quite short from a distance and was probably younger than both Pioneer Girls. The one at the gates and this girl at the door of the clubs. Oh my god, Jesus Christ. Oh, what am I getting myself into? At last, I decided to come closer, but the USSR, as I called her in my mind, jumped towards the first girl and started telling her something while widely waving her arms. The other girl, in turn, seemed confused and lowered her gaze, remaining silent. I would have probably continued to observe their amusing dialogue, but the USSR suddenly pulls out something out of her pocket and starts waving it in front of the first girl's face. Ah, uh, okay. This something turned out to be a grasshopper. <coughs> the first girl squealed. She must not be too keen on insects, as she instantly rushed off towards the place where Lenin presumably made his speech about the workers and peasants' revolution. That is to say, towards the square. The USSR glanced at me, grinning playfully, and dashed after her. Not a bad start to the day. I have absolutely no clue where I am. Besides that, there are some kinds of there are some kids here role-playing as pioneers. And as far as I can tell, this place is located thousands of kilometers away from my home. It might even be a different reality. And this was indeed a reality. I mean, everything around me seems so real, if a little embellished. 
that I was starting to think that, in fact, my previous life could have just been a dream. What am I supposed to do now? No idea, man. You're gonna have to figure that out for yourself, because I would be freaking out, too. I was picking at the cracked paving stones with my shoe and staring aimlessly at the club's building. Just a few more seconds before I have to come up with some decision. That's when I recalled myself rolling on the grass, weeping. I cringed in disgust. Perhaps it's another instinct when all energy for whimpering and self-pitying is used up. The body either goes into hibernation or mobilizes its reserves. Oh god, I need another drink. Mine seemed to have chosen the second option, because out of the blue, I found the determination to figure out what was going on. And in order to do that, I had to act like a man, like a human, to maintain the dignity of representative of my own world. Oh, that is so pretty! I followed the path to the left, on the right side, which stood, on the right side of which stood small cabins, apparently the homes of the local pioneers. Actually, they looked quite cozy from the outside. Even though I was born in the Soviet Union, I had never been a part of its children's organizations, neither the pioneers nor even the younger October children. I imagined the daily life of a typical pioneer camp a bit differently. Huge barracks with long rows of metal bunks, wake up call at 6 o'clock played by a siren, one minute to make your bed, and then joining the former the formation at the drill square. Or wait, could I be confusing it with something else? Some, suddenly something struck me on the back. Hey! Fuck that hurt! I staggered but remained on my feet, turned around and prepared to fight heroically for my life. Oh, she wants to kill me! What are you doing, girl? But all I found was another girl standing before me. My mouth hung open in surprise. Pick your jar up off the ground! Oh my god, she is scary! I closed my mouth. The same pioneer uniform. But the way she was wearing it looked, let's say, provocative. Like all the girls I had met here before, this one was rather cute. But her overly arrogant expression killed any desire to get to know her any better. New here? Are ya? Fine, see ya! She threw a threatening glance at me and I and walked past. I waited for the pioneer girl to turn at the corner. Who knows what else she might have been up to. The most interesting thing was that even this hostile girl seemed completely normal to me. She did not e give off the feeling of some deadly danger. Except maybe the danger of getting punched in the nose. Ah, uh, cool! Oh, hey, hey. At last, I managed to make it to the square. There was no leaning on an armored car, although one could easily expect something like that after all this happened. Instead, however, a monument to a certain comrade towered in the middle of the square. The letters on the pedestal read, read Genda. Must be some big figure in the party. There were some small benches at the sides. It was quite pleasant here. Where did that girl tell me to go? To the left or to the right? To the left, to the right. To the left, to the right. Why am I going there anyway? Oh, right. Uh, I've decided to pretend to be normal. So, to the right. Uh, probably the wrong way. Um, I think, actually, I might leave this episode here. It might be a bit short, but that's okay. I'm planning to make these episodes about 20 minutes long. I don't know if I reach that. So, uh, I guess, remember to like, subscribe, comment, click on that notification button, and I'll see all of you beautiful people in the next video. Bye-bye!